Well, hello, this is Rick Stoll, Extension Ag Engineer at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And today I'm going to be talking about air quality issues, kind of put a perspective on air quality issues for animal agriculture, and uh, also talk about a little bit about some extension uh, resources nationally uh, that can be used uh, to address those air quality issues. Uh, this information is an abbreviated version of a presentation made at the uh, Beef Methane Conference here in Lincoln. Uh, one of the things I really like to have producers and others think about is that uh, air quality issues are not just about regulations. Actually, um, I like to have people think more broadly than that, put uh, the whole picture in context. It's not just greenhouse gases, it's not just odor, ammonia, whatever it might be. Um, we're really looking at a big picture and uh, there are some win-wins that can be, be found in this, whether we're looking at uh, uh, nutrient loss or uh, animal performance and, uh, and really when people aren't focused on regulations and how to avoid or comply with uh, regulations, uh, they can think more creatively about, um, about solving issues uh, rather than just uh, uh, dealing with regulations. So <clears throat> there's a whole scale of, of air quality issues from local to regional to, to global uh, issues. And for a feedlot operation, for example, um, the main local issues would be typically odor and dust. Uh, when it's dry out, generally dust is the prevailing issue. When it's uh, wet weather, like we've had this last winter here in 2015-16, uh, it's much more likely that there won't be dust issues, at least for a couple months now, but there may be some odor issues that we haven't uh, seen in years past. Uh, another issue that, uh, more of a regional issue for, in some cases, is ammonia loss. Uh, that's an issue that we know is, pertains to uh, cattle feedlots. Uh, there's anywhere from 30 to 60 percent uh, ammonia loss, nitrogen loss, uh, in terms of what's fed versus what goes into the atmosphere on a lot of our cattle feedlots. And we know nitrogen is a valuable fertilizer. And so just from a, a farm perspective, it would be really great to, uh, to reduce those losses. And from an environmental standpoint, we could have over-fertilization of some uh, wildlife areas like in the Rocky Mountains and, uh, and other areas. And then uh, also looking at uh, greenhouse gas emissions that makes a lot of the headlines these days. Uh, animal production does not uh, produce a big percentage of the United States uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but we do uh, contribute a fair amount in terms of methane and uh, nitrous oxide. And uh, beef cattle production specifically is a, is a large contributor within agriculture. And so it's something we should be aware of, not necessarily uh, so wrapped up in terms of regulation. They're probably in the near term. Uh, I don't expect any regulation for the vast majority of, of cattle producers. More likely it would be market driven approaches uh, for low carbon footprint uh, products. Um, and then uh, just in terms of thinking about uh, if you want more information or you want to see what others have done to control emissions, uh, there are a variety of resources. Uh, the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center has a, a, a wealth of resources on air quality and uh, greenhouse gas and climate change. And also the University of Nebraska uh, beef website is a great location to uh, look for those resources. So with that, keep things in perspective and, uh, and look to control and manage where you can.